Hello, welcome to Maths with J. We want to calculate the inverse of this matrix and we're going to do it by row reduction. So that means we want to write down a big matrix containing the matrix A and the matrix I. And by row reduction, we want to end up with the matrix I on the left hand side and the inverse of A on the right hand side. So let's start by writing down that big matrix. So we're copying down A first of all. And we put a bar down here. And then on the right hand side, we've got I. And then I like to do a check as I go along. And what I do is I work out the sum of each row and write that down at the right hand side of this matrix. So for example, the first row, we've got 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1. So that adds up to 6. And then 1 plus 2 minus 1 plus 1 for the second row. So that adds up to 3. And then the last row, the sum is going to be negative 1 plus 1 plus 4 plus 1, so that's 5. So this isn't part of the matrix, but it's going to help us check that we don't make mistakes as we go along. Now, we're aiming on the left-hand side to end up with the identity matrix. And there are lots of different ways that you can do this, but I like to have a little method. And what I like to do is to work column by column and start off with the first column to the left hand column and aim to get a 1 in the top left hand corner which actually we've already got in this case and then make the other two elements both zeros so that our first column will be 1 0 0 when we've done our first row operations so looking at the first column second row we want that 1 to become a 0 so we can use the first row there so we're subtracting the first row from the second row to make that become a zero. So row two, we want to become row two minus row one. And then in row three, in the first column, we've got a negative one, and we want that to be a zero. So this time, starting with row three again, we want to add on row one. So we're going to leave the first row exactly as it is. And let's put the bar in. And then we've got 1, 0, 0. Right, so row 2 is going to become row 2 minus row 1. So 1 minus 1 will be 0, which is what we wanted. 2 minus 2 is 0. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. Then 0 minus 1, negative 1. 1 minus 0 is 1, and 0 minus 0 is 0. And the last row, negative 1 plus 1, will give us 0. So that's good. Our first column is what we want. And then we're going to add 1 and 2 to get 3, 4 and 2 to get 6, 0 and 1 to get 1, 0 and 0 to get 0, and 1 and 0 will give us 1. And then, looking at our checks at the end, applying the same rules, the first rule row will stay the same. The second one, we're doing row 2 minus row 1, so that's 3 minus 6, so that's minus 3. And the last one, 5 plus row 1, so that's plus 6, is going to be 11. And then what we're going to do is check that the addition across the row works correctly. So the first row hasn't changed at all, so that should all be simple to check. So we've got 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 is 6, no problem. Second row, so this is where the first proper check is coming in, we've got negative 3, take away 1, plus 1, and that is negative 3, so that checks out. And then the last row, 3 plus 6 plus 1 plus 1 is 11. So, so far it looks as if we haven't made any mistakes. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is look at the second column. And we're not as lucky as we were with the first column because we haven't got a 1 in the position where we want a 1. Annoyingly, we've got a 0. 
we need to think about, well, how can we make that zero become a one? Um, okay, what I think I would do is I would use row three and add on a third of row three because a third of three is one. And because the, the reason to use row three is because we've already got a zero in the um, in the first element there. So there's less um, here. We're not going to um, make our other zero turn into a number. Okay, so that will be just one row being operated on this time. So let's just uh, write that down. Row two is going to become row two plus a third of row three. So the first row is going to stay as it was. One, two, two, one, zero, zero. And the second row, we're going to be adding on a third of row three. So zero plus zero will be zero. Zero plus a third of three will be one, which is the reason I've done this. So that's working out nicely. Negative three plus a third of six. So that's plus two. So that's going to be negative one. And then we've got negative one plus a third of one. So that's going to be negative two thirds. And then we've got one plus a third of nothing. So that's just going to stay as one. And then zero plus a third of one. So that will be a third. And then the last row stays as it is. So zero, three, six, one, zero, one. And then our checks, well, six stays as it is, and 11 stays as it is. All we need to do is work out row two plus a third of row three. So that's negative three plus a third of 11. So 11 thirds take away three. So that's going to be, well, three is nine thirds. So that's going to be two thirds, isn't it? So we just need to check then that when we add together going across that we get that. So let's work it out. One, take away one. So those two cancel each other out. And then we've got one plus a third, take away two thirds is two thirds. So all good so far. Okay, so now we're ready to make the other elements in the second column zero. So we, we want the one, that's good, the one in the middle, but the two and the three, we want to become zero. So we need to operate on row one. So with row one, we are going to transform that by this time, we want to make the two disappear, so we're going to subtract two lots of one, so two lots of row two. And row three is going to become, again, using that one that we've got in the uh, in the second row, so we want to take away three, well, three of those, don't we? So we're going to have row three minus three row two. And row two will stay as it is because we're happy with that one. Okay, so we have got one take away two lots of zero. So that stays as one. And then two take away two times one. So that's zero. So that's looking good. And then two take away two times negative one. So we're adding on two to two. So we're going to get four there. And then we've got one, and then double negative again, so plus four thirds, so that will be seven thirds. And then zero, take away two times one, so negative two. And then zero, take away two times a third, so negative two thirds in there. So that's that dealt with. Row two stays the same, so we've got zero, one, negative one, negative two thirds one and a third and then row three taking away two times row two so zero take away zero stays as zero and then three take away three will be zero so you can now see that we have got column two looking good and column one is still staying as it should be so we're getting there gradually okay so the last element of this matrix so we're taking we've got six take away three times negative one. So that's going to be six plus three, so that's nine. And then working across, we've got one take away three times negative two thirds, so that's going to be three. And then zero 
take away 3 times 1, so negative 3. And the last element, 1 take away 3 times the third, will be 0. So let's do our check. And applying the same rules to the checking numbers, we've got 6 take away 2 times 2 thirds. So what's that going to be? Um, 6 is how many thirds? 18. So 18 take away 4, so it's 14 thirds. Next row is easy because it's all stick the same, so that's still two thirds. And then the last row, we are working at 11. Take away three times two thirds. Oh, that's relatively easy, isn't it? Because it's just 11 take away two, so that's nine. Okay, so now let's just check the sums going across. So for the first row, we've got one plus four. If we do the whole numbers first, one plus four take away two, so that's three. And then we are adding on 5 thirds, really, aren't we? And that does come to, to 14 thirds. Excellent. And then the last row, the 3 and the negative 3 cancel each other, so we have got 9. So it's all looking good. So we are 2 thirds of the way there, because we've got the first two columns as we want. So again, we're going to apply the same kind of rule to the third column. So we're looking at where we want the 1 to be and dealing with that first of all. So that 9 has got to become a 1. So all we're going to do now is divide the third row by 9. And let's just um, give ourselves some more space. So we've got the first three rows of working on the right-hand side so that you can still refer to that if you need to. The last row is now moved up to the, uh, the top of the page. So what we're doing with this is we're going to make the third row have 0, 0, 1 in it. So we're building up towards seeing the identity matrix on the left-hand side. So let's do that. So row 3 is simply going to be divided by, by 9. So we're simply copying across, as before, our first two rows. And the last row is simply being divided by 9. So on the right-hand side, dividing 3 by 9 is giving us 3 ninths or a third. And then here we've got minus a third, and that will be 0. So nice and simple. And when we do our check, the, the 9 becomes a 1. And the other two checks will be as they were. So now we've reached the last stage because all we need to do is to make the last column read 0, 0, 1. So we'll be able to use row 3 to do that. So row 3 is fine. We just need to change row 1 and row 2. So row 1, instead of 4, we want a 0. So we need to take away 4 times 1. So it's 4 times row 3. And row 2, instead of the minus 1, we want a, instead of the minus 1, we want a 0, so we just add on row 3. So, the first row, when we add um, the 0 to 1, we get 1, and 0 again stays 0, but the 4 will change to a 0 when we subtract 4 from that. Right, so we've got 7 thirds, and then we are subtracting 4 thirds, so that's going to be 3 thirds, or 1. And then we've got negative 2, and then we're subtracting 4 times negative a third, so we're adding on 4 thirds there. So that's going to be minus 2 thirds. And then we are going to be just leaving minus 2 thirds as it is, because adding 0 leaves it as it was. And then row 2. So we're just adding row 3 onto that. So that will stay as 0. And that will stay as 1. And minus 1 plus 1 will be 0. That's looking excellent. And then just adding minus 2 thirds and a third gives us a third. And then 1 plus minus a third gives us 2 thirds. And a third 
plus zero will be a third. And row three stays as it was. And you can see we now have the identity matrix on the, the left hand side. And then on the right hand side, let's just check. Do our, we'll do, work out what our checks should be. So we've got row one minus four row three. So 14 thirds minus four. So that's going to be 14 minus 12 divided by three. So that's two thirds. And then two thirds plus one, so that's going to be five thirds, and one just stays as it is. And then checking when we add across, so the top row, one plus one minus two lots of two thirds, so that's two minus four thirds, that's two thirds, that's all good. And then in the second row, the thirds cancel each other out, we are left with one plus two thirds, which is five thirds. So the last row, the third and the minus third cancel each other out, and we're then left with a one. Excellent. So we have found the inverse of matrix A. And if you want to check this properly, you would of course multiply the matrix A by its inverse and check that you do get the identity matrix. So let's just write that down. So the inverse matrix is one minus two thirds minus two thirds minus a third two thirds one third one third minus a third and zero so the important thing here is the method that we used so using row reduction means that you can means that you can start with any row and add or subtract a multiple of any of the, the other rows. So you'll notice that each time we have to work on each individual row. You might be wondering what would we have done if we didn't have a one in the top left hand corner to start with. If you have a look at what we did to get the ones in the other positions, I suppose actually because we've got all um you know, there are two different possibilities aren't there either you could have had a zero there or a number other than one if you would had a number like say five you would have multiplied the whole row through by a fifth if you had a zero there you would have had to have added on another row to get something other than zero there to start with so in fact we ended up having a zero in um in column two didn't we where we wanted the one and we had to deal with that to get the one in there